I think the biggest difference was when I came in the game is is the lyrics a little bit. I think you have new artists who, younger artists who are about lyrics, but it's not so much steeped in the culture like like it was when when I was coming up. Like like whether it's hip hop culture or black nationalist culture, gangsterism is is kind of fading out. I think, but it's not something that's extra extra deep. It's more about the music. I think nowadays the, the thing I, I like about these newer artists like Drake and Wiz Khalifa and Nicki Minaj is you name three artists that really couldn't have been that more different and they're all as relevant and their styles are unique it's not like you name three artists who are trying to like in the same lane you know when I call myself a man of the, the people if I'm going to call myself that I have to truly be a man of the people not just the people I agree with um, and so and just, I mean, just on a smart, competitive level, when it comes to hip-hop music, I listen to all of it. I, w I watch every video, I pay attention, I read every article. I, you know, I, if I have the money, I go out and buy everybody's album. Whether it's an MF Doom or it's a Soldier Boy, I always look at what people do. And I, and I, I it's like religion, you know, like I, I try to take the best of, or philosophy. You just try to take the best of what makes sense for you and apply it to what you do. And you give re people respect for creating and expressing themselves, and you encourage that and you support it and it comes back tenfold yeah, I got a, a, a good mental relationship with my man Bow Wow you know and me and Bow Wow chop it up all the time but I mean I know everybody I know all the MCs if you rap and you dope I know you and I sense when an MC is sort of um, I, I don't want to say in my lane because everybody has their they lane but I sense when an MC is, is, can be compared to me or, or, or can mesh well with my style so when I see somebody coming up, like when I did the first thing I did with Blue was the Hostile Gospel, Hostile Gospel remix, and um, like and even with Joel, Joel Ortiz who was on that now, he's doing a lot more work in the business now than he was when I did that record. But that was something where Blue I knew about, but Joel I asked around about. I was I asked people I know and I trust, like well, who's really doing it right now? And the name that kept coming back two years ago was Joel Ortiz. People in OK Player particularly were talking about Blue all the time. Blue and Exile, that album, Below the Heavens. Um, and I didn't have the album. I heard uh, like a song or two. And I sat down with the album and I was blown away by that, by that album. And I was blown away by how much Blue to me sounded like a younger version of what I would do. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like how Blue and Exile approached it is how me and High Tech would approach it if we were coming out now. Yeah, you and I is just one of the most ambitious groups out there. And they're, they're you know, they're extremely talented, extremely passionate about the music, but they put themselves out there and they put themselves in a position to not be ignored. So you and I is like, they're like an underdog group where it's like, I think people are, people sleep on them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think they underrated um, with how they, what they bring, especially with the live show, like what they do on stage is just crazy. They they perform like rock stars, even though people don't know who they are. They perform like, fuck that, we rock stars. You know, Kanye uh, lives has a spot out here in L.A. and in, in the summer I went to visit him, and um, he was just he was sort of just in his house by himself, working on this on this record. It was a good ass job record back then, and um, he was just playing me songs. A lot of the stuff that came out recently I had heard this summer and Chain Heavy, he was like, I could see in his head he was thinking, oh, I, maybe I should put Kwali on something. So he was like, well, what about this? You like this? I was like, yeah, that sounds dope. And, he, and the next day he sent it to me. But that same day he went to Facebook and did and performed the song Chain Heavy. And so I was like, okay, was well, he about to put this out now? So I thought, okay, when I seen him on the Facebook thing performing it, I was like, okay, I need to jump on this now. So I recorded my verse like two days later and then I forgot about it. And then like when he was doing Good Friday, like maybe a month ago, Don C hit me up and was like, yo, you got that chain heavy verse? And I had to go and find it. And I had to like track down the engineer in the studio and that took like three days for me to track it down and found it. But I found it and sent it to them. And then like a week later it was out with another Kanye verse and consequence on it. I mean, I think Kanye West is, is one of, if not the most relevant artist right now. I think he's one of the greatest representations of our generation. His ambition, his, his passion, his drive, his dedication to the music, and how just incredibly good the music is. Um, I think we need people like him to, to, um, 
to express what people are scared to express. And um and as and, and on a hip hop sense, he's the conduit. It's like he learned a lot. I learned a lot from Premier and P Rock and Q Tip and so did Kanye. And then Kanye learned a lot from me and Common and the Roots and Most Def and then Kanye and then Kanye came out and then he brought Lupe out on Touch the Sky. And now everybody there's a lot of people who like Lupe but hate on Kanye and they forget the reason why you even heard of Lupe is because of Kanye. Yeah, gutter rainbows is, is um it's a childhood image that I remember I remember from seeing in the gutters like the oil and the dirt and the water mixing and um you know the producers on the album and it's the idea that that you can find beauty anywhere is, is sort of the concept of the album and the sounds on the album take me back to childhood the producers are M Phases um, E Jones Nick Speed Symbolic One um, you know yeah there might be a Mad Lib cut on um on gutter rainbows i'm not sure but i'm, I'm working on the liberation too right now with madlib as well hey yo it's talib kwali you rocking with la stereo.tv peace <laughs>